Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of Erin's Book Club. Um, you'll have to forgive all of this again. Um, it is hotter than hell here in Canada today. Um, and I'm just melting. <laughs> but I have a really good book review to do that I kind of want to share with you guys. Heat or no heat. Um, so the book review that I'm going to do is different from all the book reviews that I've ever done before because it includes a very interesting part that I'm actually going to use in the review. It has got a reader's guide with discussion questions. So the review is actually going to be me answering the discussion questions because I think that's an awesome idea. Um, so the book that I read today or the last little bit, was The Commandant's Girl by Pam Jenoff. So if you see that. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this book. This book kept me captivated from beginning to end, which is one thing that hasn't happened recently in the books that I have read. So it was, it was such a treat. Like to the point where I was actually, I, I went to bed, couldn't stop thinking about the book, woke up and started reading until I could get past to a point where it was like, okay, well, I guess I can, I can go to bed now. Um, I think something got knocked over. Anyway, um, so let me read the back of it for you guys. And then from there, I'll go through the discussion questions. Now, the discussion questions are related to the entire book. So this will not be a spoiler free review. So if you have not read this book, stop listening right now, go read the book, and then come back and we could all answer the discussion questions. So the back of this is 19-year-old Emma Bo has been married only three weeks when Nazi tanks thunder into her native Poland. Within days, Emma's husband, Jacob, is forced to disappear underground, leaving her imprisoned within the city's decrepit Jewish ghetto. But then, in the dead of night, the resistance smuggles her out. Taken to K Krakow? I, I, I can't say these words. I'm very sorry. To live with Jacob's Catholic aunt, K Kirsa, uh, Emma takes on a new identity as Anna Lip... Lipowski, a Gentile. Emma's already precarious situation is complicated by her introduction to the Commandant Richwalder, a high-ranking Nazi official who hires her to work as his assistant. Urged by the resistance to use her position to access details of the Nazi occupation, Emma must comprehend, must compromise her safety and her marriage vows in order to help Jacob's cause. As the atrocities of the war intensify, so does Emma's relationship with the Commandant, building to a climax that will not risk not only her double life, but also the lives of those she loves. And before I get into the discussion, this author takes in the complexity of faith along with deception and war and mingles it into this, this historical romance like nothing I've ever seen. And this is actually a very classy romance. There isn't any of the like um, Harlequin-esque type of sex scenes in it. Um, it. It leaves you very intrigued. And it was interesting reading something where the Jewish faith is the primary faith in the book. Because I know nothing about the Jewish faith at all. I'm, I know more about the Catholic faith. I'm not Catholic, but I know more about the Catholic faith. So that perspective was amazing to, to read through. But that being said, let me go through these questions because I think that this, this questions for discussion thing is, is amazing. So the first question is, what do you think about Emma's choices in the book? Were they believable given the circumstances she faced and what were her other options? I think um, given her age, given her situation, given the struggle of where she was and who she was, I, I think that her choices were the only ones that she could make were the ones she made. Um, if she didn't get close to the Commandant, we couldn't get the information we needed. If she didn't get close to the Commandant, her position may not have been that secure. I think um, for the age that she had, I think she, she, and the way she was pushed by an obviously biased people that she was living with, I think those were the only decisions she could make based on her background. I don't think she had any other options that were viable to her, especially with her age. Okay, second question is, do you think the ends that, estima, that Emma was seeking justified the means, i.e. her choices and actions? 
<sighs> no. I actually don't. I think that all the risk and all those choices that she made did not justify the end. I think that she very well easily could have been killed multiple times for a little bit of information that, that got to this resistance and they seem to have already known about it. Um, and they seem to have already made their decision on what they were going to do despite what or even though what information that Emma brings home. Um, and I don't think the risk was was worth it. I, I honestly think that she was one cog in a machine that that she had no... I think the resistance actually made it worse for everybody. I think it made things worse in the in the book. I think um, if she had gone about a more diplomatic way, we the book may have ended differently. Third question: Despite being only nineteen years old, Emma seemed wise beyond her years. Did her character change throughout the story, and how? Yes, um, she is only nineteen, and when you first start reading about her, you do you do realize that she is young and she is naive and she is immature in her thought and she is innocent in her thought and she is timid and and not much of a backbone and and plays the good wife pretty well and that changes at the end at the end she she says it the way she wants she fights for what she believes in even if maybe what she believes in isn't accurate she fights for it and she gets a stronger opinion and a stronger viewpoint and I think she grows up a lot beyond her years as the book progresses. It's then actually it's an amazing character growth to see from what the author started her as is to what the author ended her with. Um, fourth question: What was the most difficult challenge faced by Emma? Do you think you would have been capable of making such a decision if you were in her shoes? The most difficult challenge. Jesus, I don't. All of the challenges were difficult. I think I would have the most hard time actually being infinite, um, intimate with the Commandant because he stands for everything that that I would hate. And, and that would be so hard, especially since, you know, if I had a man that I was married to and that I loved, I would really struggle with that. And I would really struggle with leaving my parents and, and not being able to go back. Um, but then again, I have a, a natural distrust of, of the other human being. So I don't even think I would have been able to leave the ghetto with a stranger because I don't trust people. So I think my book would have been very boring. I would have been killed in the camp because I don't trust people. Um, but yeah, I, a lot of the decisions were very difficult. Um, five. What does Kirsa, what role does Kirsa play in the story? How about Lucas? How do you think they affected Emma, and how might her situation have turned out without them in her life? Well, Kirsa, right away. Without Kirsa, she would have been dead. Kirsa has protected her throughout the entire book and, and everything. And I think without Lucas, I think she probably would have faltered a lot earlier. Um, she probably would have faltered on the deception. I think that Lucas kept her strong because she thought of Lucas as her child, and she had to protect her child. And I think Lucas probably saved her in that way, made her strong enough to fend off what was going on. Okay, next question. Phil. Sorry, guys, that was my cat. You have to bear with her. She's 22 years old. Um, okay. So, uh, question six. Do you agree with Emma's decision to keep the pater paternity of her unborn child a secret from her husband? Why or why not? Absolutely. I absolutely would have done the same thing. First of all, if if it's a child that I have given birth to out of a man that I was forced to be intimate with to recover secrets for my Jewish 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 faith, then guess what? I'm raising that child Jewish, and and I betrayed my husband to get information, and as a result, I got a child. Guess what? It's my my husband's child. I I couldn't agree with her actions more. I would have done exactly the same thing. Okay. Emma kept secrets from both men in her life, the Commandant and Jacob. Do you think real intimacy is possible in such circumstances? No. I don't think she could be really intimate with either one of them, especially since she wouldn't be able to give her full self to either one of them without trying to hide a little bit of herself back because of the secrets that she's been keeping. And these are drastic secrets. It's basically an affair. And yes, it's a sticky situation because it's an affair that had to happen. But I think that if the war ended and they were together, she would have had to tell Jacob everything. Um, and I think I would have been 
hard pressed to not go with the Commandant if I had that option too. That would have been hard. Um, yeah, but I don't think you can have real intimacy with secrets. Because intimacy is trust, and how can you have trust with secrets? That's the way I look at it. Um, next question is, in a perfect world, what do you think Emma genuinely wanted to happen between her and George? And between her and Jacob? I think Emma was really innocent. I think she she thought that she could have a real intimate relationship with both men. I think that for a long time, the Commandant was a great escape route of thinking about her husband being out there all alone. And keep in mind, they were only married, what, for a year, I think? Um before all this happened. So really, how close could Jacob and her be? I think it's a sense of honor and duty that she was with Jacob, but I think she, in a real sense, loved the Commandant. And I think if if the war wasn't an issue, I think she wanted to have a happy life with the Commandant. But keep in mind, he was in his, what, in his 50s? So how much of a happy life are you going to have with him there? I, I, that's a difficult and sticky situation. Next question. How do you think Marta felt about... Wait, how do you think Marta felt about Emma? Do you think your feelings for Jacob compromised her mission with the resistance? Do you believe that there was more to her relationship with Jacob than she led on to Emma? Yes, I absolutely do. I absolutely do. I do think that Marta and Jacob were an item. I think there was an affair that happened there. Um, because why would she get so angry about how Emma was, was with the Commandant if she didn't feel a major jealousy and how does the major jealousy happen unless you're intimate with the man that you care about I absolutely think that there was a relationship there and I, the way the author poked at it and said there might be something there there might be something there and then just kind of let it go I, amazing just amazing um okay at the end of the book Emma and Lucas were escaping to freedom in your mind how do they live their lives out where do you think Emma winds up one month after the end of the book? One year, five years. I honestly think that Jacob, because we haven't seen Jacob after the bombing, I think Jacob died in the bombing. And I think she was sent to a safe house where there will be no Jacob. And she will either have to learn to, to carry on and live her life for Lucas, or she's just going to give everything up and, and stop trying. Um, but I think that Jacob is actually dead. I honestly do. And one year, she either survives and carries on. Five years, she might be profitable and might have a good life. Or, in in one year, she's wasted away to nothing. Both options are very real. Pam Jenoff is careful to portray the Commandant as a sympathetic character despite his allegiances with the Nazi party. Do you like his character? Were you able to look beyond his political feels and views and feel sympathy for him? Why or why not? I do like the character. The author did a great job of making him sympathetic. I could kind of look past his political views and 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 feel sympathy for him, but but then that's me being naive as well because he must know what's going on. And even though him knowing what's going on to still carry on with that. He's the perfect enemy because you're going to love to hate him, but then you hate yourself for hating him because he's also trapped in his own world. Just like Emma was trapped in her own belief and, and didn't choose to be, you know, the way she was. I'm sure the Commandant didn't choose to be the way he was. It, it's a very good evil character, and I almost wish that he didn't die in the end because I think it would be interesting to see what happens. Um, but all in all... This is an awesome book. I love that there was questions at the end of it. I think more books should have that. Um, and it was such a good read. I just, if you guys need an interesting um, historical romance um, with the, the the Nazi feel to it, um, with an interesting enemy and, and a very real viewpoint of it, give the Commandant's Girl a try. Um, I'm actually losing the light now, so hopefully maybe it'll get a little cooler here, but I'm going to end this now so that I can upload it and you can still kind of see what I'm talking about. So thanks very much, guys, and I will let you know when I have another book read.